So now, all of you readers out there, get ready. Jeffrey Brown has the latest installment of our NewsHour New York Times book club. Now read this. A young couple separates, the husband disappears, the wife travels to Greece to find him. A separation is a mystery in which she and we only learn so much. And it was our November book club pick. Author Katie Kudamura is here to answer some of the questions our readers sent in. Welcome to you. Thanks for doing this with us. Thank you for having me. I, I called it a mystery. I've seen it a thriller. What, uh, how do you think about this book? It's funny, you know, I think it kind of comes on like a mystery or it comes on like a thriller, but ultimately for me, it's a book that's about grief. Um, it's about letting go of past selves and letting go of people that we've lost as well. A thriller is the way in for a lot I of us. I think huh? so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to some of the questions Great. that we heard, okay? The narrator demonstrates a level of self-awareness and honesty that is quite frankly admirable. Why then did she marry such an unlovable man? Okay, we have to let in the, uh, those who haven't read it, The Unlovable Man, but this is about picking your characters, right? The narrator is the woman going to find this man. She doesn't really want to find him, but she does. Yes, I mean, I think in a lot of ways, one thing that the book grapples with is the fact that it's really impossible to fully know another person, and I think that includes ourselves. It's hard to really know ourselves 100%, and I think one thing that I thought about a lot as I wrote the book was the fact that, that we do things that are mysterious to ourselves, mm -hmm. whether it's being with somebody who seems less than wholly admirable. Um, so in a lot of ways, the tone for the book is of a person who's trying to understand something that happened in the past. A person she's decided not to be with. Yes. And now she has to figure out, well, who was he anyway? Yes, that's right. I think, And I think that can happen even with people you feel you've known very well for much of your... Yes. You know, you come across them again and you think, who, yeah. who was that? And who was I when I was with that person? Yeah. And that can be a friend or it can be a partner or a parent. It can be anybody. But you kind of access past versions of yourself through other people sometimes. Okay, let's go to our second question. Your narrative begins by plunging into a dry, fire-blackened landscape and ends contemplating a nameless black pool. What connection should we draw between these bookends of devastation? Bookends of devastation, dramatic. <laughs> but, but I mean, he's getting at the sense of place. And for those, uh, again, who haven't read it, set in this far-off Greece which, well, you tell us. I mean, why, why sure, that setting? Sure. I mean, it's set in um, a very remote part of Greece called yeah. the Mani, um, which is kind of famous even within Greece for being quite rugged. Um, it's an incredible, beautiful, desolate landscape. It's, it's the really, off-season, so nobody's it's, there. It's off-season, right? nobody's there. It's really sublime in the real sense of the word. I went there um, probably 10 years ago now, and I, it was a very particular time in my life. My father had been sick for quite a long time when I... I've been there and he would die two years later, but it was while I was there that I really accepted the fact that he was going to die. And so for me, that landscape was really saturated with kind of grieving something that was going to happen. It's more than just a kind of landscape, a beautiful, picturesque landscape around the character. It's really a kind of psychological terrain. Let's go to the next question, because I think that is about, it goes to your personal experience. Right. Okay. What personal experiences have prompted her to write such a heart-wrenching story about infidelity, separation, and death? Okay. Well, you started to answer that. Yes, I, I did. Yeah. I wrote it in the years after my father died. When I started writing it, I didn't think it was a book necessarily about grief. And then when I finished, I looked back, and there's, there's mourners, there's loss, there's um, the rituals of grief are really fundamental mm -hmm. to the book. So I think... Um, in that sense, it's really rooted in my experience of that loss, which is a, a very kind of central one for me. Okay, let's go to our next question. I'm curious about your literary influences. I read a lot of fiction in translation, and my character is a translator, and I think yeah. that's that idea of words being shifted from one language to another is really fascinating to me. Why is that? I grew up in a household that spoke Japanese and English, so I grew up kind of surfing between two different languages, moving back and forth. And I think that's fundamental to the way I think about language and the way I think about storytelling. Okay, let's go to one more question. Thank you. My question is, did she kill her husband? My question for you is, 
Who did it? Who killed Christopher? <laughs> okay, we, we, put, we put those two together, the who done it. Now, you are not gonna tell us who done it, right? Okay. Did you know who did it? Did you know, I, I don't, I don't know, but it's really funny because you don't know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> because, because also the narrator has no name. She's unnamed, and yeah. people often say to me, "What's her name?" And you know, I wrote a version of this novel in the third person before putting it aside, and I think she must have had a name in that version, but I never look back, and I don't know what her name is either. All right, we'll continue this online, and you can find the entire conversation there later. For now, Katie Kitamura. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our next book for December is garnering much attention. It's called There Will Be No Miracles Here. Author Casey Gerald tells his up-to-the-moment story of attaining and then questioning the American dream in a deeply personal and political memoir. As always, we hope you'll read along and join the discussion on our Facebook page for the Now Read This Book Club, a partnership with The New York Times. And